let's start everything off with the women's cup right we want to maybe stick with something that's the most recent and it's hard to believe that this is finally coming to an end uh the women's cup uh has a new champion it is ol reigns spoiler alert if you were waiting to sort of maybe go back and watch on on paramount plus we're gonna let you know that third place honors go to uh club america in, in this one as well mm -hmm. but lisa this guy all kicked off august 14th came to its conclusion tonight on Saturday, August 20th. Expanded teams, expanded format, uh, six teams included in the competition this year, still hosted by racing, but all new teams participating with the exception uh, of racing, including the NWSL participating team, which was OL Reign, but Club America, Tottenham, AC, Milan, Tokyo, Verde. So a ton of teams participating in this, right, alongside racing. And that also yes. a quarterfinal round, uh, a match for fifth place, match for third place, and tonight the cup final. But it wouldn't be, uh, yeah, I don't think it would be, uh, you know, an international competition without some type of dramatics involved. And that was provided by the weather, quite frankly. There were a couple delays that took place on these final match days, uh, impacting both the third place match and the cup final. But maybe let's start. Uh, you know, with, with Club America and AC Milan. Wild scoreline in this one. It ends 5-4. Club America taking the honors for third place in this one. This was such a fantastic game. It was so back and forth. Um, Club America just scoring incredible goals and going like back to back to back. It was all tied up. I know, Sandra, you and I were texting and talking about this match. We were like potentially talking about overtime because that leads into implications. It was a lot to kind of dissect as this match was going on. And before you knew it, um, Club America had scored back to back goals and taking this game from a tie at 2 2 to 4 2. And then it, it, more goals coming in and out of this one. Um, Allison Gonzalez with a hat trick in this match. There were five goals for Club America. So anyone that's not watching League MX Femenil, like this is a team, this is a Club America team that you can be watching every single week in League M Liga MX Femenil. And frankly, it was so entertaining. What a great third place match to watch, honestly, because these two teams were fighting for everything on yeah. the pitch. AC Milan giving everything they had. There, We saw some cheeky soccer. We saw some smart soccer, some great team soccer. It had a little bit of everything in this match. I, I got to say, like, I, I loved um... – what I've enjoyed the most out of this this women's cup, I love that it was all new teams that were participating in this tournament that's you know has been hosted two years in a row now by by racing Louisville. And I love that they expanded it, right? Because without expanding it, you wouldn't get the introduction of, of some of these teams um within the competition. But I'm it, it gives me hope for like you know future uh iterations of this this tournament that maybe that will open the door for the possibility of even you know cycling out even more teams to participate within this competition. Um I wouldn't mind seeing like a mix of things next year. Like I wouldn't mind maybe seeing like a mix, like there were six teams in, involved in this year. Maybe you you invite like you know, if it is hosted by racing once more, maybe you invite two more teams, you know. Or, two teams that participated in this tournament and then, you know, four more teams to who were maybe new faces to, to this competition. So um, I would, I didn't anticipate when we were previewing this, that this game was going to end in this type of scoreline. We're talking about a nine goal nice. little shootout, quite frankly, hat trick for Alison Gonzalez. It was cool to see um, Kathy Martinez get on the scoreboard again or, or on the scoreboard for, for Club America and then Kiana Palacios get on the scoreboard once more for this team as well. Um, but I think for me, when I'm looking at clubs that were participating in this tournament, that it's Club America, maybe that it's running away with kind of like the, the, the breakout star mm -hmm. of this particular tournament. Cause I think sort of reading, you know, the, the clubs that were participating in this one, when we were doing the interviews and we were doing the coverage in the preview, it's, it sort of felt like everybody was talking about Tokyo Verde, that they were very excited to watch that type of team play. And uh, Tottenham as well. And uh, I think maybe Club America came in here and maybe kind of stole some of the intention, right, that maybe some of these other teams totally. 
uh, were trying to get. So it's like the, with the result that they were picking up, the, the soccer that they were putting out there, the goals that some of these players were scoring, um, it was fantastic to see. And I love that they're walking away with third place honors. Oh, completely. And I think it was a, a big deal, and, and it still is, to have teams like AC Milan from Serie A in this tournament. Obviously, the two NWSL clubs in Racing Louisville and OL Reign, but then to have uh, the Mexican side and Club America be in this and the English side and Tottenham to be in this really provided, and, and of course, Tokyo uh, bringing the Japanese style of football into this tournament as well. But to have those different styles of the game coming together in this tournament, and I think maybe if we talked about this last week, it was like, okay, which games are we excited to watch? Like, I know I was excited for because they're, they're a team that has a lot of great footwork and they can keep going um, and be really technical. But I think looking at a team like Club America at the end of this, that's a that's a team that's going to want to come back into this tournament and that racing level is going to want to invite back in for more times to come. No, I'm with you. I know we had a recent interview with Scarlett Camberos, and it was cool to sort of hear her talk about something similar, that there are things that this team is going to walk away with and take back with themselves to Liga Mekis Feminil that they can utilize within their own season in their respective league. Um, and this is a player that has, uh, you know, experience playing in American collegiate systems. So to hear her, you know, talk about how she's been navigating her first season with uh, Club America and then sort of going ahead and playing against NWSL teams and saying, hey, there was some physicality here that maybe we were unprepared for, that even I was unprepared for, uh, you know, the quick transitional type of stuff that we get to see. And uh, I'm excited to, to sort of take all everything that we learned from that and take it back into Liga MX Femino. So uh, if you all haven't had a chance to check out that interview uh, with Scarlett Camberos, please go ahead and, and take the time uh, to take a look at it. Uh, but in the meantime, we have to recap the final as well. It came down. We got our wish. We were like, hey, we wouldn't hate seeing an NWSL Women's Cup final. And we got it between Racing Louisville and All Rain. Racing entering this one as the title holders of the match. And All Rain, first time participants in the competition. But they come from behind in this one, Lisa. And they take the honors. Oh, sorry, bud. Did I lose you again? Seems like we might have lost Lisa again. So look. OL Reign, everybody took the honors in this one. They came from behind 2-1 to defeat Racing. It kind of looked as if Racing was going to be uh, on another uh, winning side of the Women's Cup. For folks who don't remember, they won the inaugural Women's Cup last year on penalty kicks against Bayern in Munich, but that wasn't the case this time. Now they were going up in this final against another NWSL side against OL Reign. And something that Lisa and I were talking about in the preview of this match was whether or not we were going to see some possible rotation from Laura Harvey and OL Reign. Because what we saw as OL Reign and Racing Louisville entered the competition during the semifinal round of the game. We saw on racing side during their semifinal that they kind of had their usual suspects, typical starting 11, but that wasn't necessarily the case for all rain in their semifinal. So during their semifinal, we saw players who typically don't get the start with Laura Harvey and O.L. Reign, players who are, were more utilized uh, coming off the bench or typical death players. And we were wondering during our preview of this cup final, if we were going to see some rotation on O.L. Reign's side, like perhaps we were going to see their usual suspects finally, their usual starters in a game like this because now there was going to be a title on the line. And that's, I think, ultimately what we saw. That came to fruition. It came to happen. It came to pass that Oil Rain rolled out with a lineup that had typical starters that you would see in a regular season NWSL match. And I think to start this game, it helped a little bit. But I think Dave is getting this go-ahead goal, this breakthrough mm -hmm. goal in the first half, I think maybe set some things in motion for the second half for Oil Rain. It definitely did. This a player in Kristen Davis is one that for racing Louisville has has maybe had inconsistent play throughout the NWSL regular season. 
and she comes up big in moments for racing Louisville. It's truly very, very fun to watch her as a player because um, I know even they were talking about this on the broadcast a little bit, uh, Jordan Angeli saying that in college, uh, Davis was a player that scored like 40 over 45 goals or something throughout her collegiate dates. Like she knows how to score. She's an incredible goal scorer. And it, it's just finding that rhythm and that consistency with racing Louisville. But to get the opening goal in the 34th minute, um, huge for this racing Louisville team and that has done well throughout this tournament. But I love the fact that this goal for racing Louisville came on a turnover. It was a high press from them as O.L. Rain was trying to build the ball out of the back. Um, it's actually Jalen Howell who's out wide putting pressure on O.L. Rain's back line. And she ends up winning the ball in a turnover and, and it comes into the box and it's actually bobbled and bobbled around by Davis in the box. And she ends up somehow getting a better touch on it. And then the goal that comes from Davis is <laughs> really, really well, well struck. But the the initial touch by Davis isn't all that great, right? But she makes up for it with a great shot. She turns, um, essentially her back to goal, turns and strikes it from distance. Oil Rain, uh, like if you, when you watch the replay of this goal, their defenders, their goalkeeper for Oil Rain are all just watching the ball go into the net from, from the shot on Davis. It really was well struck by her. And uh, I thought that that was maybe going to be the game changer in this one for, for racing Louisville, but um hindsight's always 2020 and and watching how ol rain played throughout the women's cup coming back from behind scoring goals having a lot of different player rotation and different personnel um frankly that's exactly what they did towards the end of this one but i think um i i, I don't know i had ol rain or I, excuse me i'm racing louisville winning this one and when they got on the board first i was like this is yeah. this is how we go but then they kind of lost a lot of their momentum um especially in that second half Ooh, it was a, it was all a well in the second. Oh, hundred percent. I think there was a little bit of a line change, quite frankly, coming from, mm -hmm. from Laura Harvey in, in, in this one, but it actually worked to their benefit. Right. And that was something that I was sharing, you know, with, on, on the live here, just like who, what all rain were we going to see in this cup final? Because we saw in the semifinal, how it was a lot more of the, the depth players involved. And we got mm -hmm. to see, typical starters to start this game, but making this like kind of line change in the second half and getting some of those players who were heavily involved and in that semifinal uh, now involved in this cup final, I think is obviously what did it. I think we saw the game winner in this one, mm -hmm. this incredible pass by Jimena Lopez all the way oh. to Jordan Heidema. It was such a, it was a beauty of a goal, really highlight worthy. I love that Mexican international linking up with the Canadian international for the, for the go ahead goal and ultimately the game winner. And you know what? You got to keep things interesting. You got to shake it up. It's a new, it's a new international club tournament. It's only in its second edition. And now we've okay. got another winner in this one so now it's racing who had earned the first year titles and now well rain have earned second year honors in this one and uh i th i thought it was great i can't wait to see what the third edition of this looks like and oh completely um i, I want to talk about all rain's two goals though because you mentioned the live the line change from laura harvey's side and that gets a player like olivia athens into the game for ol rain who hasn't seen that many minutes for for laura harvey's side she's a young player, 23 years old, um, into the league. And she comes in and she scores a goal. And that's huge. That's like another aspect of this tournament is that coaches and clubs can play um, maybe some players that are deeper on their bench, get them minutes, get them consistency, get them confidence and, and a rhythm in playing with these teams. And, I mean, Sandra, you mentioned the Jimena Lopez through pass to Haidema, but it was so beautiful. It was just so stunning the way that she uh Lopez put such great pace on it texture on the ball it was driven it was hard it was on the ground and Heidema is on the back shoulder it's a diagonal run for her so the ball went through the outside back and the center back and Heidema went through the two center backs so the double uh lane run and pass and it was truly beautiful and that game winner was really well done by uh, Heidema and, and huge for a well rain to win this one um 
I wonder if they'll be invited back next year to the women's cup. <laughs> I mean, they're going to listen. I think they have, have to. to be given an opportunity to try to defend that title. Right. I think that's sort of like where my head is at when I was kind of alluding to that a little mm-hmm. earlier, as we started talking about the recap of this tournament that I would maybe in the third year edition, I, I would still maybe like it to be the six teams, but perhaps if, if, racing are is the club that is going to continue to host this obviously they're going to be participants but if ol rain are the current title holders they have to be invited back so i don't know if you necessarily get a new nwsl side that gets invited into this tournament but that doesn't mean the rotation amongst other global teams might not change uh i would love to see club america also Same. make their return to to this I think tournament. they deserve it Right. You know, you got your first, second and third place, uh, you know, winners. Why don't you invite them back to the mix in uh, in 2023 and perhaps, you know, reach out to uh, three other clubs and sort of flesh out the uh, the six teams. But but we'll see. It's uh, it was a lot of fun being able to to chat about all of these games and then talk about them here and cover them and watch them on Paramount Plus. If you missed any of the action, you could catch all of the highlights on attacking thirds YouTube page. So make sure you hit subscribe and you can go ahead and uh, watch all the action that you may have missed, or you can catch uh, games on demand on Paramount plus check them out when you are able.